welcome to the game plan. I want to show you a couple of examples. There's only three defenders marking almost half the field. Adam Reynolds turned in, Campbell Graham turned out, Ryan Pappenhausen with his ball playing ability. Pappenhausen, the beautiful ball! There's a couple of things I want you to have a look at. But you see that there, let's bang down the front door first. Hello, welcome to The Game Plan, where each week we bring you in-depth analysis you can't find anywhere else. I'm Zach Bailey, joined by Anthony Seabold. Seems plenty of uh, wet weather across the weekend, but the footy was still of great product. Yeah, great quality football over the weekend, starting with the Melbourne Storm versus Parramatta Eels game last Thursday night. OK, now we've focused on attack and defence over the last couple of weeks, but we really want to hone in on the defensive role of a fullback and how important their work rate is in the modern game. Well, they have the highest work rate in the modern game, there's no doubt about that. They run for the most metres per minute. They also run for the highest um, metres um, with regards to high speed running. But most importantly, they're the captain of your defence. So they need to organise the defensive line with regards to their numbers. It's a really important role. OK, James Tedesco is the best number one in the game. We've got to rewind a little bit in, to look at this clip. But this just shows how important his role is as a full back on the line. So this is the last two plays of a set back in 2017. Game one, Blues are on top. And on... On this particular clip here, James Tedesco runs for 150 metres within these two plays. So here's James Tedesco defending on a short side, close to the line. Just have a look at his movements here in his Kelpie dog running. Think of a little Kelpie dog on the field, the open field there. Running really quickly, but more importantly, makes a try saving tackle on Machelet there. Okay, so this is now fifth tackle, 64th minute in this game. The Blues are leading 28 to 4, so they're up by 24 points. He could be having a rest here, but James Tedesco doesn't. Yeah, again, as I said, almost 150 metres in these two plays. There he is as a defender on the open side on the last play. Have a look at his movements here. He keeps himself in the frame and he keeps moving just in case. So regardless of what the Maroons throw, he is in the frame pretty well the whole time. And there they go, they shift right. Just out of the picture at the moment. But this is a classic tackle. And this summed up that Blues performance that particular night. Here he is, just right at the very last second comes into our frame. But more importantly, have a look at who he tackles and where he tackles him. Tackles Dane Gay Guy, the right winger for Queensland Maroons. Puts him over the try line. Again, they were up by more than 12 points. Would have been an easy play to not do his job. He kept moving just in case. OK, so two try-saving tackles in two tackles. That's a coach's dream. Seves was the Maroons' assistant at that stage, yeah. so I hate to uh, reopen those old wounds. Let's fast forward, as you said, Thursday night, a cracking game and a great game from the Eels' fullback in Clint Gutherson. Yeah, so the defensive performance of the weekend for mine was Clint Gutherson. And these are some examples. I've got three really good examples of where he saves tries. So this first example here, you'll see here's Clint on a short side here. Most fullbacks close to the line will go on a short side. They'll plug the short side to thicken up the defensive line. Just have a look at his movements here. Flo follows the football. Doesn't need to get into the tackle, but he organises the line the next play. You'll see him now on the left-hand side of your screen. There he is here. OK, Gutherson's here. Just in case... Thicking up the defensive line of the Parramatta Eels. Brandon Smith, show and go. Who makes the tackle? There's the first try, try saver. This example here is literally two plays later. So it's the last play. And you'll just see Gutherson come to the edge of the screen here. I'll let it play through. Big Nelson, Asafa Solomona, close to the line. Tackle five, another try saver. So two try savers in three tackles, very similar to James Tedesco from 2017. Okay, but there's no try saving stats out there at the game. We all remember Mike Acevo's efforts, but he was at it again here. Yeah, so this is another example. So the same half of football, you can see his movements out the back. I keep referring to a Kelpie dog. A Kelpie dog's a quick dog, wants to sprint across the field. Come a Kamitha for the Melbourne Storm there. Again, close to the line, reaches out, Gutherson makes the try-saving tackle. So there's three try-savers that I've shown you there. OK, so they are examples of when the Melbourne Storm are attacking from, say, what, 15 metres or closer to the try line. What about when they're further out? What's the role of a fullback in terms of where they're where they have to be positionally in this part of the field. Yeah, so what fullbacks will try and do, they'll plug in the line, they'll try and thicken up the line. So by that, more numbers in the front line. So what happens is there's no fullback defending on these players. This is the clip of the weekend for me. So I want to point out two players. I want to point out Cameron Munster. You'll just see him at the top of the screen here, and you'll also see Clint Gutherson there at the top of the screen for the Parramatta Eels. So this is a game of cat and mouse. Two elite players, Gutherson for Parramatta Eels, Munster for the Melbourne Storm. Just have a look at this. Now, Munster looks short side. He looks short side, 
by doing that, what happens is he plugs Clint Gutherson into the line. Where Munster wants to get to, he needs to be in this position at the back of the shape. So he wants to link with his halfback, Jerome Hughes, um, or Ryan Pappenhausen. That's where he'll get to. But he plugs Pappenhausen, sorry, he plugs Clint Gutherson into the line. Have a look how this pans out. Okay, so Gutherson's seen Munster come along and he's on his bike going, I've got to get over here. He's, on, he's, he's a Kelpie dog there. He's working really hard. Now he gets in the frame. He could make the tackle on Addo Carr. Have a look at himself. He could have taken, taken Addo Carr to the floor, takes himself out of play. He keeps moving. The play of the weekend for me. There he is again. That's his fourth try-saving tackle in one half of football. And when you look at the scoreboard at the end of the game, it was all the difference between Parramatta and the Melbourne Storm. Great analysis, Steves. I agree. That is definitely the clip of the week. Uh, we all love a game of cat and mouse, but the cat doesn't always win. Sometimes Tom and Jerry, Jerry gets away. Yeah, so this is another example of where Ash Taylor, the ball player for the Gold Coast Titans last Friday night against the Broncos, he shows himself on a short side. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to manipulate the numbers that Jermaine Asako puts on that short side. So what's, what Asako's done, he's left one, two, three, four defenders on a short side, but then Ash Taylor comes around late. So let this play through. OK, so again, a little bit similar to the Munster clip previously. Ash Taylor wants to get in this position here. He's trying to get in that position to, to be a ball player at the back of shape. Now, what happens is, in the end, Gold Coast Titans play the tunnel ball through to Fafita. But more my point is this. You can see Asako here. He didn't plug in the line. He left an extra defender on a short side. So what it does, it really stresses that long side of the, uh, the Brisbane Broncos' right-hand side defence. OK, so they haven't used Ash Taylor, but they've still got an extra number, which leaves David Fafita some space. Asako gets there, but David Fafita too strong in that instance. Yeah, too strong. There should have been... Uh, Sarko plugging in the long side would have thickened up the defensive line and it means that there's a little bit more support for Milford and Tessie Newey trying to tackle the, uh, you know, the express that is Dave Fafita. Now, Steve, you've used that phrase, plugging the line, a couple of times. What do you mean by it, exactly plugging the line? Yeah, it's a trend that started in 2015. Darius Boyd started to put himself in the front line to thicken up the defensive line or the numbers in the defensive line for the Brisbane Broncos. And most fullbacks since that period of time have decided to do that, particularly when the, the attack is inside their 20 metre zone. OK, so why do they do it? Well, what they try and do is add an extra defender in the line. So, yes, you don't have a fullback, so there's a risk against a kick uh, from an attacking perspective, but they put themselves in the line. So you look up as a ball player and think, that's a thick line, and you just shovel it on the inside, uh, inside pass. All right, so let's see an example of a good fullback plugging the line. Yeah, so Pappenhausen puts himself on a short side here. Now, the idea of putting himself on a short side is, is so that on the longer side, it's a really thick line. So if the ball players or Parramatta want to play to that long side, there's a whole heap of numbers there. He puts himself in the line there on a short side. Parramatta decide to attack against him. He stays in the line, makes the tackle on Dylan Brown, which is what he needs to do. Then he gets to his next job. So good urgency here by Pappenhausen. There he is out the back on his Kelby dog. Good job by Pappenhausen. OK, but the key there is not only plugging the line, but then getting up, getting on your skates and getting back to where you need to be in case they shift the other direction. Yeah, exactly right. This time Pappenhausen plugged himself on the long side. So what he's done is he's got the, the correct numbers on the short side here. I'll let this play through a little bit. And I just want to point out Pappenhausen here. So there he is on the long side this time. Parramatta attacked that way. Now what he's looking for, he's looking to see if there's any threat in and around that space there. So he'll stay in the line initially. OK, you can see him now. He was in the line, takes himself out of the line on his Kelpie doll because there's no more threat that Parramatta have through that space there. So he leaves that space, gets on his Kelpie doll, out the back of the shape. He's in the position to make the tackle if he needs to be. But by putting himself in that front line, Parramatta looked up and there was nothing doing for them on the long side. OK, and how important is it, you mentioned off the top as well, they're the, almost the captain of the defensive line these days. How important is your fullback in setting up your defensive line? Well, I think he's the most important defender in, in your team uh, because he does set the numbers. He set, he's the, the person who organises the defensive split. So um, if we have four on a short side and six on a long side, he's the one who organises that. OK, so Scott Drinkwater plays for the Cowboys. He was once earmarked as the Billy Slater replacement down at Melbourne. And here he is here uh, against the Dragons on Saturday night. Yeah, so good job by Drinkwater here. He thickens the line up, OK? Initially, he puts himself on a short side. There's a couple of players who I want to show you who help Drinkwater with his line organisation. So I'll let this play through. There's Maguire back late. Now, I'll just pull it back here a fraction. You'll see these two players for the Cowboys. 
The four and defender Mitch Dunn, three and defender Michael Morgan, they helped drink a water with the Lion Org by telling to, uh, Drinky, get over the other side of the field. They've got their arms up, and that's as simple as it is going go left. Would it be the chat in that scenario? Would it be go left, go left? What, what they'll say is they'll say flip. They'll say, flip, drinky, flip, drinky. He'll flip to the other side of the play the ball. Now, what that does is this. It means there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven defenders on the long side. So when Ben Hunt looks up in this particular situation, there's a really thick defensive line. So what's Ben Hunt do? He just plays to the inside. Who's there making the tackle? It's Scott Drinkwater, which he needs to do because there was an inside ball option. The previous example, no inside play option or inside ball option, so Pappenhausen went out the back on his Kelpie dog. OK, so there are some examples of when a fullback has been in the right position, they've counted the numbers right, but you found an example across the weekend where it hasn't come off for the defensive unit. Yeah, so Fafita was a destroyer last Friday night for the Gold Coast Titans, but I want to show this. I just want to point out there's a play the ball here, uh, Gold Coast attacking the Brisbane Broncos line. So if I put the numbers up here, there's only five defenders marking up the long side of the field here. So there's five defenders on the long side. There's two markers. There's seven defenders there, which means there's six Broncos defenders marking this space here inside the 20-metre zone. All right, which automatically gives an advantage to the Gold Coast Titans. Now, Dave Fafita's out here. He was looking for blood the other night, but... Tessie Newey, Anthony Milford are stressed and under pressure out here because Jermaine Osaka hasn't organised the defensive line with the numbers he needs to. Normally from that field position you would have seven defenders on the long side, which means that Milford, Tessie Newey feel a little bit more protected with regards to their numbers. OK, so compare this to the clip before. Whose responsibility? Yes, it's a fullback, but it's a communication between these guys down the short side as well to say, hey, Jermaine, we need, we need guys to flip. We need guys over the right, right edge. That's exactly right. So you saw in the previous example, Michael Morgan and Mitch Dunn for the Cowboys, they flip drink water from the short side to the long side to give them the extra number. So all of a sudden, Cowboys had seven defenders. So in this situation here, Broncos are under the pump. Only five defenders from where you would have seven defenders traditionally to give support to the right edge defence. So... It's, a, it's an area that the Broncos, in particular Jermaine Asaka, needs to improve, but also Herbie Farnworth as a left centre and also the left half in Brodie Croft. OK, so if you play this out, it results in a mismatch between a giant in Dave Fafita. The Titans have already got the extra numbers here with bodies going through the line up on two smaller men in Anthony Milford and Tessie New. Yeah, you can see the amount of space in and around Tessie Newey and, and Anthony Milford. Yes, they could have come up with a better uh, tackle. There's no doubt about that. But they were under stress from the play of the ball. There was only five defenders on that long side. So, again, Dave Fafita and the Gold Coast Titans take advantage of that. So the media and the criticism, even Kevin Walters in the press conference, said that Anthony Milford had a nightmare job. But it wasn't purely on him. It was on their whole defensive unit, not numbering up on the line there. Yeah, it's a team sport. So, again, as you can see, some really good examples of Gutherson organising the line, Pappenhausen organising the line, Drinkwater organising the line. They're the most important person, but they need help from other people as well, particularly short-side defenders. But, again, the responsibility of the fullback is to organise the, the, the structure and the numbers with regards to how many on the long side, how many on the short side. Steve, as always, great analysis. I hope you enjoyed that at home. Make sure you tune in next week for another episode of The Game Talk.